What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Q2C VR Gamer. My name is Eric and today we are taking a look at the newest PC VR headset on the market and that is the E4 from DP VR. We are going to do a quick unboxing, take a look at the headset, go through setting up the software and connecting the headset, then see how it does with playing some of my current favorite Steam games. I've been looking forward to checking this one out, so let's go. Okay, if you haven't heard of DP VR before, you're not alone. DP VR has mainly been making VR headsets for the enterprise sector and location-based VR. I actually had a chance to check out the E4, DPVR's first foray into the consumer market, back in December of last year at Immersive Tech Week in Rotterdam. Without having any prior knowledge of the brand, I actually came away from the show quite impressed with the early design version of the headset. With inside-out tracking and no need for base stations or lighthouses, I would say this headset mostly compares or competes with the HP Reverb G2 and the Quest 2. Before we go too far into comparisons, let's take a look at the specs of the headset and see the unboxing and design. It sports a single LCD display like the Quest 2, Fresnel lenses, a resolution of 1832 by 1920 per eye, with a great 120 hertz refresh rate. It does have a pretty large 116 degree field of view, and weighing in at just 480 grams with the head strap, it's actually lighter than the HP Reverb G2, which weighs in at 490 grams and the Quest 2, which weighs over 500 grams. The headset's also claiming a software adjustment non-manual IPD of from 54 to 74. And then the last spec would be the 90 degree flippable front display, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So with the specs out of the way, let's take a look at the headset itself. With the box open, I can see that I really like the way the headset is shipped and presented. Everything looks well placed and protected inside the package. I actually really like the design and size of the headset. It's extremely light and feels like it's well built. The front of the headset flipping up so you don't have to take it off and look around in your environment is a real plus for me and I really wish more headset manufacturers would do this. At first glance, the Halo head strap design and the facial interface actually remind me of the PlayStation VR 2. But here is where I hit my first pain point with the headset. The facial interface is less of a pad and more of a light blocker, just like the PlayStation VR 2. And after a bit of extended use, it's actually quite uncomfortable. The fat itself just collapses uh, when you put it on your face. It doesn't really cushion anything. It is removable, so I hope to see a replacement option offered by DPVR or an outside company down the road. The head strap itself comes with adequate padding that is removable for easy swap out or cleaning. And overall, it's a fairly comfortable headset, but tough to compare with many comfort items that are available from other companies like Kiwi, Bobo VR, and VR cover that go on other type headsets. Until they make options for this headset, it's just going to lack in this department of comfort. As for the lenses, I think they're actually really, really good for Fresnel lenses. With a single panel LCD screen, just like the Quest 2, they do look bigger than the Quest 2 lenses and have a bigger FOV than the Quest 2 or the HP Reverb G2 at 116 degrees. Unfortunately, it's Fresnel lenses so god rays are definitely present, but almost no screen door, and with the extra field of view and the 120 hertz, it runs super smooth. One of the biggest fails for me here is no manual IPD adjustment, and the software adjustment for the IPD is just not good enough in my opinion. It's needed to have a manual IPD so you can adjust to fit everybody's IPD, and the software IPD, as of right now, just doesn't cover enough adjustment for most people. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the visuals, and I'll go over some of the games that we played later to give you an idea of the experiences I had with the headset. Let's talk controllers and tracking. The controllers themselves feel and look just like the Quest 2 controllers, with a slanted halo ring instead of the normal straight one. They feel light, and maybe a little too light, as they seem like they would not take much of a rough hit. But overall, they seem adequate. Where they fall off a little bit is in the tracking. They're just not as good as the Quest tracking. And to be fair, most other headsets that use inside-out tracking are not as good as the Quest. I'm talking about you, HP Reverb G2. But most of us are just used to how well the tracking is in the Quest 2, so it's just noticeable when another headset tracking is not as good. DPVR has stated that they are working on improving the tracking through software updates and are committed to making it perfect. Okay, onto the speakers and microphone. While the microphone is adequate and sounds okay, it's just that, adequate. That being said, you'll have no problem being heard or understood during those multiplayer sessions. The same cannot be said for the speakers. They just aren't that great. 
With speakers built into the head strap like the Quest 2, I thought they might sound about the same, but they're not even close to the quality of the Quest 2. To the point that I would not even think about using this headset without either earbuds or over-the-ear headphones. Here is the one bright spot with the audio. Unlike the HP Reverb G2, this does have a 3.5 millimeter jack built into a small breakout box on the cable, so you can hook up wired headphones. And speaking of the wires, no compressed signal from the PC here, as the headset connects with a DisplayPort cable to your PC and a USB 3.0. The headset comes with a 14 foot long cord, and there is also a small breakout box at the back hanging not far from the back of the headset, and a power cable needs to be plugged into an outlet. The breakout box is a little bit of a letdown as it's a bit heavy, but the connections all seem secure and it's fairly easy to plug in. It does have a great double cable clip system for routing the cable to the back of the headset that I wish more headsets used and really does a great job of routing the cable exactly where you want it to sit. Okay, on to how it hooks up to the PC. It does not just plug in and run Steam. It has its own proprietary software that you have to download to your PC and gives you the DP VR Assistant. The DP VR Assistant is where you can set up your Guardian, tweak your headset settings, and run Steam from this app. It's actually quite intuitive and easy to set up, unlike some other headsets. Yes, I'm talking about you again, HP Reverb G2, with your Windows Mixed Reality. Once you set up the software, everything launches right from here and you can even test your computer's compatibility from the Assistant software. One point to note for you, I did have a tough time when I connected it to my computer for the first time. It just didn't want to register my Guardian. I saw that there was an update that needed to happen for the software and I updated it and it fixed the problem. So if you have any issues connecting to your PC with the software, just look for an update that should take care of your issue. So let's get down to what we all want to know. How does it play your favorite PC VR games? First off, let's remember this. The headset's $549 and one of the most affordable PC VR headsets. With that in mind, I went in and played three games that I've been really enjoying right now and all ran really, really well. And while there are other headsets that are better on the market, there are none at this price point with this visual quality without base station. So this headset is a little perplexing for me. While I find it to be a good headset that I enjoyed using, it has a few things that just puzzle me. As to why they did them, I don't know. There are a few issues, and some are small, that just hold this headset back from being truly great and being a definite recommendation, such as this. IPD adjustment face gasket, controller tracking, and audio all lack in my opinion. They needed to be just a little bit better. If they did these things and made them better, and I know they are working on a few, this headset does take a step up in my opinion. So in the end, in my opinion, the pros outweigh the cons if you are a certain category of gamer. If you are a PC VR only player and don't care at all about standalone wireless VR, this headset could be for you. If you are new to PC VR gaming, or if you're in between headsets, or just ready to upgrade from an outdated or older headset, and you want a good, affordable headset to hold you over until that next big gen headset comes out, this headset could absolutely be for you. I have to say, for their first entry into a consumer-focused headset, they've done a really good job, and I'm really looking forward to what DPR can come out with in the future for consumer-based headsets. So in the end, another really good headset that just falls a little short being great. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have questions that I did not answer, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll make sure I get back to each and every one of them. I appreciate you being here to go through this headset with me, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you are not yet, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell so you know when we go live or we drop new content just like this. Thanks for being here, everybody. Have a good one.